hello students again um, welcome to the the class um, so this is about the linux programming and scripting uh, today we will be talking more about uh, the perl um, today's class um, actually in, in today's lecture uh, i'm going to talk mostly about um, the things that we have already talked about i want to reinforce some of the concepts and also give you some more additional um, items uh, with respect to perl as um, as we know perl is a very versatile language um, used very widely um, in across many applications uh, not just limited to the software side it's also used in um, the chip design side of things a um, lot of them using Perl as the main uh, scripting language. So last week we covered some of the um, um, things about functions I am going to um, go through it one more time just to reinforce uh, the concepts um, we talked about the function declaration how to call a function passing the parameters uh, local variables and returning values. So these are all the main things that we talked about and I hope that you have already understood this um, just in case I am going to um, go through these uh, things in more detail. So today we can think of uh, today's session is largely a, a, a recap session um, but there will be like few more items that will be covered again those things uh, like control structures uh, that we talked about briefly when we addressed um, the, um, the data structures themselves. Um, we talked about in context of the data structure here we will be more formalizing and talking about uh, how the control structures work what are the different control structures etc etc. So again uh, on the functions uh, we talked about the function declaration I just want to again for the function declaration we use uh, the keyword sub to describe the function. These parameters are required basically. Um, um, so the function should always start with the keyword sub. It should uh, preferably either uh, in the end of end or in the beginning of the main program. This improves the readability. Um, Perl does not have any such requirement as to where the functions declarations should be. Um, so you can you can use it in the beginning of the program or at the end of the program. Um, but use it in one place consistently all the time so that that improves the readability. Uh, and then how do we use functions essentially like I mean that is the function calls. So here the get name is the function and then we provide this ampersand uh, and then once we specify that that becomes it, it Perl understands that this is a function and it goes for the particular functional declaration and then it looks for where the function is actually defined and then it uh, runs that function. So the symbol ampersand should always precede the function call in any function call. Um, the parameters essentially like I mean the always the parameters are passed um, as a list. So even if you have a array that you are passing the array is expanded and the entire list is passed as a parameter. Um, one of the thing about Perl is that um, the Perl keeps this parameter list in this particular variable which is um, an array variable ampersand um, uh, or at underscore and this essentially like I mean means that uh, it is this list and then you can directly access um, each of the parameter by accessing the elements of this list. So if you pass only one parameter the size of the this particular list is just one variable. But if you pass two parameters, then it will be two, and then these can be addressed as dollar underscore zero and dollar underscore one. And then if you have more number of parameters, this just goes on um, endlessly. Um, the array thing is a very nice feature, so that um, you always like. I mean, um, it does not um, really um, constrain you to have only like fewer number of variables or fewer number of parameters. 
uh, when performing an array call, I uh, mean performing a function call. The variables declared in the main program are by default global variables, so they will continue to have their values in the function also. What this means is essentially the scope of the variable um, is extended into the extends into function. Okay. So um, if there are any local variables, the local variables are um, declared by using my um, in the beginning to declaring the variable. So these my types of variables will have the context specified in that level. So if you're using my inside the functions, and so that has a scope only within that function, it does not go outside, right? Outside of it. And uh, we also saw the return values essentially like I mean the result of the last operation is return um, unless you have an explicit return statement um, in the function in which case whatever the return value that is specified inside the return statement that is returned. Um, one thing to note is there are no pointers in Perl. But we can manipulate and even create complicated data structures. Okay, so uh, the, the other thing that uh, we just touched upon was uh, is used to form a list from a scalar data, um, depending on the delimiter. So if uh, so, here one example is R one zero one space com space eighty nine percent, and then um, we declare this as basically like I mean so we specify an array and then we just say split and then that means that basically the split happens with space the blank space here and it is on this uh, variable which is dollar underscore. So the resulting value is essentially as an array like uh, beta dollar beta. Zero equal to one zero one dollar data one is term and then dollar data two eighty nine percent. So the default delimiter is the space and the default array is um, dollar underscore. So here, so the dollar actually like this should be about this. So the data zero will have R one zero one. Data one will have Tom, and then data two will have nine percent. So um, as I mentioned, the default um, is uh, dollar underscore variable. If you want to perform on another scalar variable. Then the syntax is split with um, um, the delimiter and then the, the actual variable. So here the delimiter is again still space and then uh, the line value. But uh, in general, the syntax is the delimiter and the space uh, and then the line value, and then the the variable itself. Where which one you want to uh, split? That. And we also saw this in the last class actually that. Um, Whenever we have a split, um, the dollar ampersand stores the value of the matched pattern, or this is for the matching, sorry, not the split. Um, and then this one, the dollar forward tick stores the value that is after the pattern, and then the dollar back tick stores the value that is before the pattern. So now let's look at the join. The join actually does exactly opposite job as a split. It takes a list and then joins up into all its values into a single scalar variable. Um, and this also uses the delimiter provided.
Now matching and replacing this is also something that we saw in the last uh, class uh, or the last lecture. Um, if you need to look for a pattern and replace it with another one we can do it with this S command this is actually a lower case S on this note down. Um, With the replacement pattern. Um, again, by default, this acts as on the dollar underscore variable. Um, you can act. You can make it work with other other variables. Um, you can say like I mean, okay, in this new val. This is what we want. I want to substitute this pattern with the replacement pattern. Now, what is pattern and what is pattern matching? And this is something that is uh, crucial. Um, and also, like this is not we didn't talk about it in a big way. These lectures. A pattern is a sequence of characters that can be searched for a, uh, in a character string. Um, and usually, the pattern is represented by the slash and it is in between the two slashes um, and then we know that equal to uh, tilde uh, tests if the pattern is matched and there is also an, a way to do a test with it's, uh, the, the pattern is not matched and that is bang tilde. So what are the patterns um, so here a uh, typical pattern and one pattern is like this a set of characters enclosed within the um, slashes and this will match even defined because B F is part of the defined so it will it will match that um, if you specify two blank spaces then it only matches the blank um, on either side of def. Here, the caret actually anchors the def as the first um, three characters in the line. So here it matches this def. And then, if you specify, like I mean, uh, the the dollar denotes end of the line. So if you're saying like caret and caret def and then dollar, then it has only one word in the line, which is def. So only the def will will match. And then uh, the question mark sign is basically used for um, um, any in the middle. Um, so here, uh, D question mark F uh, matches D F D F. Like I mean, so there is nothing here. Um, the E is basically like it, it uh, may or may not uh, exist. Um, now the D and then like in square brackets E or uppercase E, this matches either D E F with the lowercase E or D E F with an uppercase E. And then uh, if you do a, a caret before the E E, then if there is E E, then it won't match, and anything other than E. Match for example, A, V, D, everything. Then, if you put a dot, and then that means that it can match any character in the middle. Basically, dot denotes like any character. So it can be space, non-space. Things like that. So all these will be matches. On and then the play plus denotes basically it is one or more so it is the ABCF will be matched and then if you put a star then that is zero or more so DF will be matched and then the DAFFFF will be matched so all these things will result in a match. Now this is an interesting one it is a double braces on one and three um, and it is DEF. What this means is the E can occur one to three times. So essentially, it can be D E F or D triple E.
number in the double braces and then it will see if those many items are there. And a three comma with the empty spaces three or above, so it can match any number of E's, um, which is three or above. And then zero to three matches only up to P E F, which is on zero to three of E. So now let's look at the character ranges themselves as to um, how to specify and what do each of them denote. So in Perl we use like one, two, three, four, five, six uh, different um, letters for denoting the pattern. So these are you can think of um, this escape sequence as a shorthand notation. So what I mean is the square brackets zero to nine means like any. Eight digit match any backslash D or escape D, and then uh, an uppercase D denotes anything that is a not a digit, which is same as putting the caret in front of here, which is don't match zero to nine, but match anything other than that. Now the W is essentially a word character. Which is an underscore zero to nine, uppercase A to Z, and then lowercase A to Z. So um, all these are considered as the word characters. So if you specify uh, backslash W, that is the shorthand notation for this pattern. So instead of that, we can just use the backslash W. And then uppercase W is um, basically it matches. Um, Anything but a word character, so um, that means that the same pattern with the caret in front uh, that denotes not of that pattern. Backslash lowercase s. This is kind of um, counterintuitive here basically it's opposite of um, the in or end of file any non space characters are matched using the backslash s and then same thing like backslash uppercase is will match anything but a non non space or a, but a white space. So that's why we have a, a carrot in front. So these things are used. From there, you can get extract them out. Um, so here, there's a pattern which Fred and Barney, and then basically um, um, Okay, so um, as you saw, actually, the we can use the parenthesis as a memory. So here, when we match the Fred, Barney, and then basically give a character in between, 
and then when we say like uh, this slash one the one represents the first parenthesis so that means that um, it is this one so any replacement that will happen will happen on this first uh, character um, and then you can you can put many other parentheses and then you can denote like which one that you want to replace with uh, the character um, as I mentioned actually this um, kind of um, using the parenthesis as memory and using it to do the replacement you can actually try it in uh, VI because um, it uses a sim very similar syntax for doing the replacement. So um, let us talk about uh, the control structures um, in Perl we have the following control structures um, if unless statements so um, if unless uh, statements we will see some examples of how do we use these things and then while until uh, the while is probably like I mean one of the most popular statements in uh, Perl then we also have for these are formal for statements and then there are for each statements which can operate on lists uh, we we'll see how we can do that and then we also have some of the control altering um, commands last next and read we will see how these things are used and then finally like I mean there is a logical operators actually these are more like op op operators but they can also be used as control structures and let us see how they are getting used. So let us start with if the use of if is very similar to that of C we already saw this briefly in um, one of the earlier lectures uh, the way to use is if then followed by condition then we open the double braces and then basically like write our program and then we close it and then we can say else if or else and then also like um, put the condition uh, the unless is a command which um, also has very similar syntax as if and here the syntax is shown here basically unless and then the condition and then the double braces. So when you want to leave the then part and have just an else part we can just use unless so this is basically um, equivalent of so you have if and then else and we do not have anything here then we want to use else and then basically the else of the same condition basically instead of else we use unless unless the condition ok so um, this is uh, basically like for if and unless we will uh, see a program with all these um, various constructs and then we will try to decipher what the program does and um, how do we document that. Okay, so, uh, and then the the next one is while, um, until and for. The while is very similar to the while of C. Um, usually, like while is the one that we use for uh, doing an infinite loop. So while some condition, and then we. We'll Double use the double braces to open and close for all the program elements here. Um, the while is kind of a, it's an infinite loop as I mentioned basically or essentially like until the while that condition is satisfied. So for example, if you are going to read a file, particular file, um, we can always uh, say while the file is uh, still not empty then we do some operations we read the file by line by line and then um, we do it and then the way to establish the while the file is uh, no longer not empty is while as there, uh, there is uh, as long as there are lines in the file. So we just uh, look for that condition basically like the, the dollar line or 
the lines are still valid in that uh, um, in that file and then if we want to counter that um, basically and then that is uh, we use until so until essentially is uh, again the 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 why how we use it and then followed by the condition and then the parenthesis and then the double braces so um, here say like while condition and then this is same as until not condition so i think um, so if and unless work the same way as while and until so that's how you should look at look at it so if if is um, equivalent to while then unless is equivalent to until or until is equivalent to un unless so um, um, the statements are executed till the condition is met um, and then um, the for or is also very similar to the C implementation here for I equal to zero or dollar I zero dollar I and then we say dollar I plus plus. Then the block of code. So this executes this loop for 21 times or 20 times rather. Now the for each statement, the for each statement actually takes a list of values and assigns them one at a time to a scalar variable, executing the block of the code with successive assignment. Again, this is also a loop. But here the argument is a list of uh, values, so we can say like for each dollar var the list. That means that the dollar var will inherit list one, list two, list three, etc. Until the list is exhausted, and then um, we can perform operations on all the elements of that list. Now let's look at the last. Last is um, similar to the break statement of C. So um, if you want to quit from the loop in the middle, we will just use the last. So and then if you want to skip the current loop and go to the next statement, um, essentially we use the next statement. And then this basically, like I mean. Exits the current loop value, but still it's in the loop, and then it goes to the next value, and then keeps going. So we saw that the the ampersand as um, ampersand and the uh, uh, the two bars as um, if we have a statement with unless condition one then condition two we can just replace it by condition one and condition two because um, that's what um, it, they point to. Uh, and then if you want to open a file and if you want to put a message that uh, if the file operation is failing then we typically use the double bar operator to actually specify whether uh, so we say like condition and then double bar and then if the, the, print, the print the file cannot be opened. So um, when we use this kind of uh, modifications we make the control structure smaller and uh, more efficient. Um, uh, 
ਨਹੀਂ ਤੰਦੀਪ ਮਾਰਕੀਟਿੰਗ ਆਪਣੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਿਹੜੇ 